In this video, we will be going over the lecture for section 1.5, Infinite Limits. So we'll start with the definition of infinite limits. The definition says, let f be a function that is defined at every real number in some open interval containing c, except possibly at c itself. The statement, the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals infinity, means that for each m greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that f of x is greater than m whenever um, x minus c is less than delta. That's the uh, corresponding to the epsilon delta definition, but in Leibniz's term, that is, as x approaches c, the y values increase without bound, okay? Because you can come up with any positive number and as big as you want, and you will always have a y value that is bigger than that particular number you choose, okay? Um, similarly, uh, the statement limit as x approaches c of f of x equals negative infinity means that for each n less than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that your y values will be less than n whenever x minus c is less than delta. Um, that in Leibniz terms means as x approaches c, the y values decrease without bound. Okay, so the y values are either going to positive infinity or going to negative infinity. Um, and that is um, exactly the definition of a vertical asymptote. So we come into the definition of a vertical asymptote and it states, if f of x approaches infinity or negative infinity, as x approaches c from the left or from the right, then the line x equals c is a vertical asymptote of the graph of f. So if the limit as x approaches c from the left of the function is positive or negative infinity, or if the limit as x approaches c from the right side of f of x equals positive or negative infinity, that means that a vertical asymptote exists at x equal to c. Now the reason why you have the OR statement is because sometimes you only have a one-sided uh, um, vertical asymptote. For instance, let me um, just go over something real quick. For example, if I have a graph here and you could have a function, let's say you have a vertical asymptote at one, your function can look like this. Or if I have an asymptote at one, they could be going in the other direction. I'm gonna kind of go over all the different cases. Um, here's my asymptote at one. You could have both ends going up. My asymptote at one, or you could have both ends going down. You could also have an asymptote with just one side going up. Or just one side going down. And similarly, the same thing can happen on the right-hand side only as well. So you basically have eight different situations of what can happen, okay, at a vertical asymptote. So it could be occurring on both sides, from the left and from the right but they don't need to necessarily be going to the same kind of infinity. This one's going to positive infinity, this one's going to negative infinity. Whereas here, they're both going up to positive infinity, or here they're both going down to negative infinity. Any one of these cases are all considered um, a vertical asymptote, okay? Even if it's just on this side only, if I were going up just on the right, or if I were going down just on the right, Okay, those would also be considered um, vertical asymptotes. So let's continue here with the properties of infinite limits. So it says, let C and L be real numbers and let F and G be functions such that the limit of X as X approaches C, the limit as X approaches C of F of X is positive infinity 
and the limit of g of x as x approaches c is l. The sum or the difference. If you add or subtract g, the limit of f is infinity, the limit of g is l. So if you add l, it's still infinity. Even if you subtract l, it's still infinity because you have an infinite number of numbers and then you're going to take out a few, um, you're still going to be left with infinity. So that's what this is. For all l, it'll still be positive infinity. Now, the product, if you have the limit as x approaches c of g times f, well, the limit of g is l, the limit of f is infinity, and then we have a breakout of the different situations that could happen. If l is positive, then you have a positive times a positive, which is positive infinity. If l is zero, you have zero times infinity, which is still zero. Zero times anything is zero. Then if l is negative, you have a negative number times a positive number, which is a negative infinity. The quotient, if you have g over f, you would end up with l over infinity. And as the denominator gets super, super large, the infraction value gets super duper tiny, approaching zero. So that you would end up with zero. Whereas if f is on top and g is on bottom, the limit of f is infinity, the limit of g is l, um, you have the breakout of the sections again. So if L is a positive number, you have a positive divided by a positive, which gives you positive infinity. If L is zero, well then you have infinity over in zero, which is undefined, and therefore the limit does not exist. And if your L is negative, then you have a positive divided by a negative, which means you end up with a negative infinity.